Hello everyone, my name is Paul Third, and this week on Mixing Wednesdays, I'm looking into the YouTube codec. Does passing our audio into YouTube actually degrade and ruin our audio? This is something that's been getting spoken about for a long time, especially on my channel, is what I, it's what I do is blind tests and like audio shootouts and stuff. There has been quite a few videos done recently talking all about it. I'm not kind of going to go into those videos because that's their tests. And again, I don't really like the whole thing of saying other people are wrong and stuff like that. So what I am going to do today is I'm going to do my own tests. And at the end of the video, you guys can kind of make up your own mind and your own conclusions. And um, based on the tests that I've done, you can watch videos from other YouTubers, see the tests that they've done, do your own tests, and then you can kind of make up um, your own conclusions. Let's get into it. Now, in my opinion, whenever you test um, audio, okay, you've got to think about what the audio is being processed through, okay? So in terms of YouTube, right, I'll talk about kind of my setup. So in terms of like what I do on YouTube, in terms of like getting audio from the door, right, from like Pro Tools and stuff like that, I use um, OBS, okay? I use Streamlabs OBS. So that records the audio from the door, and then that leaves me with a video file, and then what I do is I import that video file into Film Wondershare Filmora, so I do all my editing on that, and then I export the file, and then I process it to YouTube. So the audio is essentially having three forms of processing. Streamlabs OBS from the DAW, the video editor, and YouTube. So in my head, if we're going to look into the quality of YouTube audio, we first have to look at the two variables in the chain, which are OBS and Filmora. Now, to test OBS, what I have done is I have recorded a fast sweep, which is 20 hertz all the way up to 20 kilohertz, straight through Pro Tools into the DAW. So this has left me with a 48K file. And then what I've done is I've extracted the audio from the video in Pro Tools, I've exported it, and then I've opened it in Isotope RX7 so we can see what the sweep actually looks like to see if there is any artifacts or the signal has changed whatsoever. So as you can see, the signal has been kept clean, goes all the way up to 20 kilohertz where there's no roll off, there's no distortion, and there is no aliasing as well. So that's fine. We know the OBS is working absolutely fine and it's not degrading the audio quality, okay? In terms of anything that would be really audible. Now what would happen if we were then to import that video directly into YouTube? Now what you are going to hear is the sweep being played in my creator studio, okay? so. Whenever I upload a video, um, it goes to my creator studio, and when I edit the description of the title or something like that, it's like a little little kind of segment of the video, but I'm not using the main YouTube player, it's just a little screen in my creator studio. So let's play back that sweep from OBS and see if we get any audible aliasing. Ah, okay. Was not expecting that. We are getting some audible aliasing in there. Let's try something else. Ah, there we go. Much, 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 much better. By the way, I, I am going somewhere with this, okay? I'll tell you in a little bit. So, how does the sweep look now? Right, great. We have no audible aliasing in there, okay? Which rings true to what we just heard there. But, 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 an issue that you can see there is that it's cut off. The audio is cut off at 16 kilohertz. Hmm, should be at 20 kilohertz, but it's been cut off at 16 kilohertz. Right, okay, there was another thing that I wasn't expecting. Now, as I said earlier, I wasn't playing the audio back through YouTube's main player, so how about we just try to record the audio back when we're playing that same audio file through YouTube's main player? <sighs> Audible aliasing again. However, there is a way to fix that. Brilliant, brilliant. No audible aliasing, right? <laughs> Finally, I could sleep at night now. Right, how about we then import that audio file into RX and see what the sweep looks like now? Now that is what I want to see, okay? There is no high-end roll-off going all the way up to 20 kilohertz, same as the original file, and there is no aliasing or distortion brought in by uploading to YouTube. I have recorded the audio straight from YouTube via OBS and there is no 
high end roll off and there is no audible aliasing in there as well. Right, so what can we take from this first test? One, OBS does not degrade the audio. Number two, if you play back YouTube audio via your like content creator studio, it is going to create um, a low cut at around 16k. However, when you play audio through the main YouTube player, there is no audible aliasing and there is no high end roll off. So to me, there is no issue with YouTube. However, in other videos, I'm seeing that there is issues with aliasing and you have heard aliasing in the video already. So if it's not OBS and it's not YouTube, then that only leaves one thing, does it? Now, as you can see, I imported a 44.1k sweep and I exported it 48k via Wondershare Filmora, which is my video editor. Now, as you can see, 48k shows aliasing and distortion. So we do have a problem. There is aliasing coming from the video editor. And that makes much more sense when we understand that the video editor is causing aliasing at 48k. Now, seeing the earlier tests where I was like, oh, right, okay, audible aliasing in there, that was due to the video editor. Now, the OBS video files are at 48k. I imported the 48k video into Filmora and it was aliasing just editing the video. So importing audio at 48k and exporting audio at 48k creates artifacts. So what you heard earlier on was the 48k OBS file being imported into Filmora and it was aliasing. Now to remove the aliasing what I did was I took that 48k video file and imported it into Pro Tools, downsampled the audio file to 44.1, exported the audio file, and then put that into the video editor, which voila, we had no aliasing because there is no aliasing in that file, which I've shown. So knowing what we know now, this test will be a little bit clearer for you, okay, it'll make a little bit more sense. So what i done here was I imported a 44.1 sweep directly into Filmora and then exported it as a video at 44.1 MOV and WAV, 48k MOV and WAV, because there are kind of certain videos that I've seen talking about MOV and WAV um, being different in terms of its artifacts that it adds in. So we'll be able to test that as what I've done is I've exported those four files into YouTube, I've then went onto OBS, I've got them all kind of loaded up and then I've played them one after the other and then from there what I have done is I have imported that video into Pro Tools, exported the audio, downsampled it to 44.1 and then brought it back into the video editor. So if you do hear any aliasing, then it is actually going to be aliasing that is made by Filmora at 48k. Now, as you can see, there is no audible aliasing at 44.1, but there is audible aliasing at 48k in both MOV and WAV. They are the exact same files. There is no difference, right? There is no difference. But another thing you will notice that in both files, the high end is cut off at 17k. So not only does Filmora add audible aliasing artifacts at 48k importing and exporting, it also cuts the audio off at 17 kilohertz, which is even worse when you export to YouTube because YouTube does not cut the audio off. It goes all the way up to 20 kilohertz, which means in YouTube, the aliasing actually extends past 17k. So all the high end information that you're getting past 17k, is just pure nonsense. It's just pure unmusical frequencies brought in by the aliasing that is already in the file. So it's not YouTube, it is Filmora. However, we're not finished yet because as much as we know that YouTube isn't causing audible aliasing and we know that it's not cutting off any high-end frequencies, we do know that it's still a codec and it is compressing the signal. So what I've done is I've taken the MOV um, 44.1 YouTube file and I have compared that to the original sweep. So I've taken the 44.1 file, I've imported it into Pro Tools, level matched it, and then we're going to get to hear what the YouTube codec is actually doing to the sound.
So what we can take from that is the signal is still clean. However, you can hear that there is compression going on. It's a YouTube codec, right? We know that it compresses, right? That is what streaming services do. It compresses the audio. And that there, guys, is my test, okay? These are the tests that I have run. I think they're pretty conclusive, in my opinion. Uh, but again, I'll leave that up to you guys. So in terms of summarizing, what I would say from the tests that I've done and the conclusions I could make from the tests that I've done is that the YouTube codec isn't as bad as what everybody makes out. Video editors, <laughs> on the other hand, my God, like I'm now going to have to look for like another video editor now because being an audio channel, you know, I've I've got to have the best audio possible. Um, many people might argue 17 to 20K. Are you really going to hear it? I just, I just can't have those variables with my channel, right? regardless if you'd hear it or not. Is it going to be a big deal? Probably not, because the audio has to have that frequency content in it anyway. But if you are wanting kind of as close to pure untouched audio as you can, obviously the audio is being um, degraded slightly. Again, the audio is being streamed at lower bit rates and stuff like that. And you know you can kind of still see it on the sweep that there is. I don't know what that is, so there's kind of light bits of orange that kind of come out. Obviously, there's, slight, there's, there's elements of processing still going on, but YouTube is not degrading the audio as much as we think. And hopefully I've debunked the whole, like, can low-pass filter, like, high-end being cut off on YouTube. I think what many people have done is many people have downloaded their video back from YouTube and then processed and analysed the audio from there. If you download the audio back from YouTube, it'll, I think it's like a 16K or 17K. It's one of the two. It's a 16 or 17K cut, and it will cut the audio quite considerably, which in the end means absolutely nothing because the only audio that you need to care about is what is being streamed to your audience in real time, which we know is absolutely fine and it's being untouched. So the low pass filter thing, that is just a myth caused by people downloading the video from YouTube and then processing the audio. So is the YouTube codec that bad? No, it's not that bad. Is Spotify and stuff better? Yes, they are better because they stream at higher bit rates. I think Spotify, when I recorded OBS from Spotify, I think I was getting like 256 kilobytes per second. And when I did YouTube, I was getting like 10 or 5 kbps. <laughs> so it's, YouTube is being streamed at a lower bit rate, where um, Spotify and stuff like that that's purely audio based is being streamed at higher bit rates. So it's, it's slightly better quality. But what you, guys, what you have to remember is that YouTube is a platform where you're dealing with video and audio. So obviously to get this stuff out in sync and just to get all of these millions and millions and millions and billions of videos out every single day, I imagine it must be pretty difficult to stream the like videos at like 4K in high resolution, but also stream the audio at like, like in 200 and odd or 300 like kbps. It's, it's just, you have to be realistic, right? In my opinion, the YouTube codec isn't that bad. It isn't that bad. In terms of all the aliasing that other people are showing, I think they should look at their video editors just to make sure because I'm not getting any audible aliasing of those artifacts in YouTube. Right, so there you have it. My name is Paul Third. Hopefully this has been educational for you. If you've liked the video, pop a like on the video, please. If you've not subscribed, then please subscribe because very soon I am going to be doing another video comparing other video editing software because I can't use Filmora. And I'll get in touch with Filmora and Wondershare and see if they're going to fix the audio issues. If not, I am going to have to look for another video editor and I will make another video kind of comparing maybe three or four kind of cheap um, video editors that actually do good audio quality for YouTube as well. So, my name's Paul Third. Thanks again for your time and I'll see you when I see you.